Gabsters, how are you Gabsters doing? I hope you guys are having a lovely time. Thank you so much for joining me on another PhD series video. I am just, I love making these videos. Uh, this is the fourth one. Yeah, this is the fourth one. This video was also requested by Tabby Abby Tabs. How to choose a PhD topic? Well, I would assume that when you choose your topic, you do have a background at least in the subject in which you're choosing your topic on. So most people potentially do PhDs in the uh, major that they did in their um, sort of undergraduate study. So we are assuming that you have some background in the subject or the department in which you are doing your postgraduate degree on. With that assumption in mind, you've been accepted you're now in the department and you're now like, hmm, what should I do? Because also, I mean, some people know what they're going to do their PhD on. They, you know, from their master's, maybe they're continuing with their master's. Or some people want to do something very new, but they already know what it is that they want to do. And other people, like me, don't know what they want to do for their PhD. And they wrote a proposal for one thing, got accepted. And then once they're in, they're like, uh, um, that's not what I want to do and then it's a problem what I did was I chose something I was very passionate about and you have to be passionate about it because you are going to be doing this thing for a minimum of three years right and in those three years there will be blood sweat and tears literally blood sweat and tears not only is it going to be like super difficult and you're gonna to need to stay motivated um, it's also, you're also going to get really hot full of it, right? You're going to get to a point where you're like, you're going to be bored of it. You're going to be like, I've been doing this for like ever. Like I need something else. I need something new. And you can't leave it because you are too far in. You know, there's a point of no return. And once you're at that point, you have to sort of stick with it. And in that moment, you're going to need just pure passion because just pure passion to carry you the rest of the way when it's at that point where you are like I'm so tired like I have never felt as stupid as I have felt in the last six months let me tell you I feel like I'll actually use the word stupider with every day I don't feel smarter I don't feel like I think I've got, what do they call that, that imposter syndrome, like I'm sitting here and I'm like, why, like when, when will they find out that like I'm actually an idiot, so I mean in those moments when you feel like just a complete dodo, right, passion is going to carry you through, well that's what I'm telling myself, you know, I may not be smart and I may not know what I'm doing, but I sure am passionate, passionate, this is what you're going to be known for, like particularly your PhD with your honors and your masters you can always sort of divert post that and do something else but once you do your PhD really that's what people are going to know you for I think the most important thing actually is to be passionate which is why I'm spending the most time on it um, I'll tell you a story about how I actually ended up picking the topic that I picked um, so I love YouTube videos I fell in love with vlogging about two years ago 2014 I watched my first vlog and ever since then, I've been like, what is this, right? So I had applied and I put in my proposal and my proposal was on something completely different. And um, I started last year with my PhD and I woke up one night, I actually in the middle of the night, I woke up and I said, I really want to do social media. I want to do YouTube for my, for my PhD. And I literally picked up the camera and started my first vlog my first vlog is like at midnight like i look crappy i look you know but that was my first vlog like i just decided because i'd watched my first vlog uh i'd watched my first youtube vlog about six months prior to that and i was still just like what is this thing right so i was like in it and i was like yes and i woke up 
without having really thought about it, without having really done anything about it, I went to my supervisor and I said, the following day, I was supposed to meet her to, to discuss this topic, what am I going to do for my PhD? I went and I met up with her and I said, I want to do YouTube. And she said, what exactly do you want to do with YouTube? And I said, I don't know. And she said, well, you have to go out, you have to think about it, and you have to come back and give me, you know, give me why is YouTube worthy of studying? I walked away thinking, oh, maybe it's not, you know, maybe it's not worthy of study. Maybe I'm just, you know, being, taking this thing to, you know, maybe I'm not taking my PhD serious enough, right? I, I didn't think that, um, you know, I was like, oh, maybe I'm playing around. YouTube is like, you know, a fun thing, is a hobby thing. How is it poss possibly a matter of study and a matter of serious consideration, like, a PhD thesis so you know I dropped it and then I spent the rest of last year trying to figure out what to do I spent and this was like I think my first video was like in March so I spent from March up until September October I tried I mean I wrote like two or three different proposals on two or three different topics I mean I, at some point I was doing pregnancy and sort of early days of first year post-pregnancy I was doing um, aging I also at some point was doing um, um, really a sort of like political stuff and things on governance and um, and what do you democracy so I mean I, I, I chopped and changed and chopped and changed and chopped and changed my topics for so long and then eventually come October Come October, I realize I had like an aha moment. Like I'll put, I'll link the, vi I'll link the two videos. I'll link the first video of my sort of my first vlog, and I'll also link my aha moment video there so that you can see what happens. This is, this is becoming a very long story. Anyway, had an aha moment. Realized that I've been an idiot, and that I actually, the thing that I'm most passionate about, I'm trying to run away from. And even though at the time I couldn't really explain what it is that I wanted to do with YouTube, for me, that was the first thing. I can't run away from this thing. No matter what I do, this is actually what I really, really want to be doing. So I decided, you know what, let me figure out, let me find a way, let me think this through and go and have a sit down with her and give her valid, logical reasons as to why this was worthy of a study. And once I did that, once I sat down with her and I said, look, A, B, C, and D, she was like, oh, okay, sure, let's do YouTube as your PhD thesis, you know. I was the one that wasn't um, convinced of my passion. I, she didn't say anything that any other supervisor would have said, whether they were pro the study or against the study. All she said was, look, you need to figure out why this is worthy of a study, which you have to do anyway for your proposal, right? So you not you need to be passionate, but you also need to be able, you need to convince, you need to be convincing because, I mean, you have to write a proposal and you have to tell other people why it's worthy of study. So your passion needs to be that thing. And once you know what you're passionate about, then you can start thinking about why is it um, um, worthy of study. Which leads me to the second point. Your topic needs to be relevant, right? You, when I say relevant, for example, if I am doing, if I was to do research on fax machines and um, uh, social organization, it would be useless because nobody uses a fax machine anymore, right? But if I was going to do social media and how it, how it organizes um, social relationships, then that's very relevant now because I mean that's what everybody is using right everyone is using social media everyone's interested in the impact of social media and the way that society is organized it needs to be relevant because it makes your research cutting edge you don't want your research to be something that's already been done and dusted and sort of like hoo ha I mean who gonna read it because then everyone's gonna think I oh, know you just went and read other people's papers and then post you know cut and paste and came up with your thesis. So it has to be cutting edge. You have to be creative. You have to be, um, you know, you have to show a measure of being able to think and be critical and analytical 
and things like that. And that only comes when you're doing stuff that's really relevant. If you're doing stuff that's already done, then chances are you're already playing on other people's ideas. So you don't want that. Um, it makes your research useful, right? I mean, do you want to do research on stuff that no one's going to use? And your research being useful means that you are useful, right? For you to be useful means that increases your chances of employment post your studies. And this is employment in the private sector, in the public sector, and in academia. If you are not useful and, you, and your research is irrelevant, then go home, Roger. Who <laughs> remember sister sister so you want to make sure that your field of study is not oversaturated because then the chances of you getting visibility your research getting visibility are a lot more minimized which makes you less hireable as well and there's less chance of you being able to carve out a niche for yourself you can't change an is to an end and then say yeah but my research is completely different because it is still the same right it also makes you more hireable and it also adds to the relevance of your research. And basically all of this leads to the concept that this, your study and whatever it is that you choose to study is not, doesn't just stay at university. It is part of your career progression. This is, you know, the steps towards establishing yourself in a field, establishing your career and potentially growing from there. Therefore, um, you need to make these decisions wisely, strategically, and passionately. Gapsis, thank you so much for watching another video. Let me know what you thought of the video, if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions for future topics, and what else what else what else what else what else what else basically let's just chat in the comment section below and don't forget to like the video to share it and to what else do you do you like it you share it you subscribe yes that's what you do thank you so much capsules for watching bye